Joining me is Christine Rutherford. She is a personal trainer and a fitness and lifestyle coach. And she's here today to talk about fitness goals. And we're going into a new year, a new you. And Christine, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I was really excited to work with you again and on this series that we're doing moving forward and just be able to get out there and put the word out there and help others on my quest as well. <laughs> yes. Well, new year, new you. And I can't believe I'm going in 2021. And so tell us, how do we go about setting a fitness goal? Well, I think the biggest thing on setting a fitness goal is to pick something, you know, that you like, but just get started. You know, that's the biggest thing is just make a decision that you're going to get up that morning or even that evening, you're going to either start at the gym or you're going to search for an activity that's healthy that, that you're going to be able to stick with, you know, something that is going to keep you, uh, keep you going with it. So that, that's one of the biggest things is just get started. You know, and a lot of the time we stay on freeze, we think we have to have our whole life perfect before we get started. That's really backwards. That's like going to the tail end and thinking, you know, when is your life ever going to be perfect? It never is. Mm -hmm. So if we just look at just get started today on something and don't worry about it being perfect, just keep moving forward on it. So setting those goals and write them down because then when you can go and look at it, if you've got a day minder or if you've got a sticky note that you can put on your, your fridge or your, or your um, mirror in your bathroom or something. So every day when you look at it, that'll get you going and get you into it to just get started. Right. So something that's going to really pull and harness that out of you to be able to get going right from the beginning and you'll figure it out along the way you know what works for you I can give you an example my dad always struggled with getting his fitness in any kind of thing he has a desk job he's an accountant plus he does computer technology stuff and I don't even understand that a lot but (laughs) he works with all that stuff so basically he's sitting at a desk all the time and then they get encumbered by sitting at the desk so they end up there day and night and not getting out to do their fitness you know not eating properly and everything else and I said well you know and he says to me I really hate the gym what can I do and I said well essentially there's another avenue that you that I can go into touch on a little bit later here but essentially if you hate the gym why put that in if you know you're not going to go, you're not going to do it. Don't sabotage yourself, right? Get out and do something. I said, what do you really love to do? And he says, well, I love to go out and dance. So he started looking into a dance groups that he could learn more about the steps and everything else. Went from there, and this is probably about 20 years ago. Um, he went from there and he just started dancing and danced with his group and he ended up getting into competitions. And, you know, fast forward to today, he's now teaching a lot of the classes, which keeps him active because I think he's like, he just turned uh, 80 <laughs> in the fall a couple months ago. So, <laughs> so yeah, so, and to, to be able to have your health at that age, you know, a lot of it is attributed to just getting that activity in. So it might be for somebody just getting out for a, a 20 minute walk every day, you know, or a, an hour walk every day, you know, go somewhere where you know you're going to want to go back and do that on a regular basis, even if it's just three days a week. You know, don't beat yourself up. If you start with one, and this is what I teach my clients, if you start with one day a week, then it will lead into more. You don't have to start off as a champion, you know, being the all-encompassing, the dance instructor or the personal trainer or anything. like. You don't have to start off like that. All you have to do is just get started where you're at today. Write that goal down where your future is going with this and then focus on your why. So why do you want to do activity, right? That goes into our next question. If you have a, a, a good why, you know, and the, and the why for my dad, when I asked him these questions, was that he wants to be around for his children and his grandchildren to be able to enjoy their life as well. That's so when he, does, yes. yeah, when he does come to see us, we're not taking care of him. He's actually able to spend quality time with us 
and enjoy his life with his children and his grandchildren. So, you know, make your why. Like my why is that I wanted to be able to be there for mm-hmm. my children. As well. You want to see my, I want to see them with their significant others. I want to be able to see if I have grandchildren. I want to be able to enjoy their lives. I want that quality of life. But even more important started with me. You know, if I am healthy, then I'm happy. If yeah. and health and fitness, they truly go hand in hand. And, and again, you don't have to be like I do a uh, figure competition. I've done running in the past and, and, you know, anything that would raise awareness for, for nonprofit groups, like run, run for heart and uh, dance for heart. And, you know, over the years I've done a lot with that. Mm-hmm. Um, Type of thing, and then I wanted more, so I made my goal again, and took it to another level, challenging me to make my body more. And through that, I've had a, a, a quality of life that usually people don't get at my age. You know, I look at my my high school friends and things like that. I look at my sister and my uh, my brothers and, and my family members, my cousins, my friends. And I see that at my age, those that are close to my age or or even older or even younger, like so many young people at 20 and 30 years of age, they have very little, all these complications and little quality of life. And for me, that's been beneficial over the years that at my age I can have quality of life and enjoy the fruits of my labor so much better at my age because of that healthy lifestyle so just get started no matter where you're at you know Mm -hmm. pick that goal and get started and continue making those goals that's they don't have to be huge again they just have to be small goals that will keep you going and take you to the next level, take you to the next level, you know, like I did that. And, you know, my expectations out of what I do may be a little bit more, but that's my whole life, my whole yeah. life, lifestyle, everything encompassing, right? I, I go into health and nutrition and, and fitness and, you know, different avenues of fitness and, you know, but I, I love what I do. And again, that will lead you to that quality of life young or old. So it doesn't. And it's setting the realistic goals, right? And then you'll, you'll stick with it. And, and also, Mm -hmm. you know, you may love running in the past, but you may not like running now. So choosing that activity that you love, like your father dancing and, and, and there's so many benefits, as you said, like, you know, your, well, you know, your skin looks better. Your, you know, it's like your quality of life. You can move faster and um it, it's just well yeah I do love running still and I love the acceleration give it you know that runner's high so I'm very jealous of you at the <laughs> but I'm not able to run anymore because of car accident injuries and you know because I have had the quality of life I've had it made um, my car accident injuries less than they were when they happened. It have, I had a car accident in 2004 and it knocked me out of con- commission for almost five years where every time I tried to do something, I was laying on the sofa for a cu- couple days or for the whole afternoon or, you know, something like that. So, and I, I really ch- was challenged at that time to have a greater understanding of my clients who went through injuries and things like that, because I've had a quality of life, like unbelievable where I've never experienced that. You know, what happens when you're in pain or you can't do it because you're debilitated in a certain manner, but I didn't let it keep me down. And I feel that going back to that, it was because I made those small goals. I didn't make a goal in the first month. Oh, I'm going to be back at it. I'm going to come back better and stronger. And, you know, no, I had to start back again where I couldn't do anything for a while. And then as I got back into it, all I could do was walking. And then all I could do was, you know, uh, small weights in the gym, just small weights, you know, that was hard for me. I felt like I was going to die inside, but I looked, looked at my food. I revamped my food for what it was. And it taught me through that. Because when you look at it in life, you're either winning or you're learning. 
Mm. Those factors, right? So everything that we have as a challenge in our life, it's not about giving up. It's about sticking with it, staying in the game. And what is my takeaway? I had a a really good friend that I work out with. And uh, he's a high-level athlete. He's been in the Hall of Fame and all these other things. He still keeps going on. He's super cool to hang out with. And we work out a lot of the time together. Uh, Nick Ugla. And, but anyways, he, uh, he always used to say to me, Christine, what was your takeaway from that? And I looked at it and I was like, what do you mean by your takeaway? You know, well, what did you learn from that? What did you get out of that? Good, bad, or otherwise? So those are the things that you're looking at. If your if your um, healthy fitness is getting out and dancing, but you're going to the clubs and you're depleting your system by drinking and eating bad food while you're out there, that might not be a healthy uh, fitness exercise to look forward to. Mm-hmm. But say if you're doing something different, like you're getting together on even just get started one day a week, you're getting together a friend or two or many and, and going for a a walk or going for a hike or run or, you know, whatever that may be in your life at that moment, you can always improve on and get better. So what is your takeaway from that, that you're looking at each time you do it? How can you improve and how can you strengthen yourself moving forward? Mm -hmm. It's about patience too, having, being patient with your goal, and, yeah. and you'll see the results. And no, and Christine, you were mentioning about food. I mean, um, your food intake, the proper foods are so important to mm-hmm. keep your weight off and to feel better. So mm-hmm. can you tell us what that looks like? And Well, food, what I find with food when I'm helping my clients with the, their issues on that is how fitness and health go together hand in hand and some of the reasons are that 80 percent of your results in your fitness level is going to be your food your food Mm -hmm. intake what you're eating um time of day and a lot of the time when i get people they they're eating healthy like i have this one client they eat all organic and natural and nothing in the house that's additives and non-gmo and all this other stuff and i was trying to get him ready for competition and he kept saying oh i'm eating healthy don't worry about me and i said okay well what are you eating and how much are you eating it and what what time of day are you eating it so it wasn't that he wasn't eating healthy he was eating you know good enough proteins clean proteins you know uh, everything else was clean and healthy in his diet but he wasn't eating enough of it and he wasn't eating the right foods at the right time of day and when I started changing those around he started to see the results where he was growing and he was able to build that body muscle mass and he was able to take it all natural you know and and he started to move forward in that and his health was better and his you know so it's increased his fitness um lifestyle as well what he wanted to do a competition and he was quite fit and healthy when i got him but i was able to help him by taking it to another level just by putting his food in order Um, food in order and the right kind of foods at the right time of day there's a there's a time to feed your body and fuel it and i always like to use the analogy of a vehicle a vehicle right yes vehicle that you use so if you have a Datsun you can feed it regular gas right but if you have a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or something that's you know more powerful like a race car you've got to feed it that high powerful fuel that allows it to not get clogged up and to to promote the output that you're asking from it so when you step on that gas it's ready to go it's yeah. not all bogged up and seizing up and you know and that's just like our foods if we empower ourselves with our foods our thinking is better our response time is better our um feeling because we feel healthy we feel strong when we put you know and just get started again on your food just get started by one thing a day Hmm. you know sometimes it's as simple as putting a little bit more water into their system Sometimes it's, you know, and start with one glass a day. You don't have to drink, you know, eight, eight ounce glasses of water all in one day starting today. You know, make up, just get started again, right? Just get started on, um, uh, you know, 
putting in that extra glass, that extra one glass a day. Next thing you know, by the end of a week or two, you've got the required amount in. Yes. And, and it also curves your appetite too. drinking oh. enough water. So, you know, oh. yeah. And I was thinking, you know, um, if you're training for a marathon, uh, mm-hmm. so you're running a marathon the next day or you're in training, pasta would be OK, right? Mm-hmm. Would you say, but as a runner, like maybe a 10 K, you may not need pasta. Like it, like uh, it's, I guess it depends. Right. Christine. Well, pulling it apart and kind of getting a, an idea of, you know, not only is it disordered eating, that, that's a good question is uh, it. It's about looking at, uh, you know, when you're eating that food. You know, so for example, for me, getting ready for competition throughout the year, most of the year, I can eat, you know, pretty much whatever I want, you know, as long as I eat it in the right order throughout the day, then I'm not going to gain too much weight. So when I get 12 weeks out from a show, then I can dial in from the show by just taking out a few of those and not necessarily taking out, but lessening a few of those extra fats that I've got in, like I have to take out peanut butter for a short term because that's my, my, I love peanut butter, (laughs) peanut butter, (laughs) right? Um, I love peanut butter, but I have to take back off that peanut butter and make sure that I don't have too much of it because then it doesn't fuel my body in the right way. You know, I gain too much fats and then I can't step on stage because I'll be too fat. So I can't see the muscle um, definition and things like that. So it goes into all that. But looking at more, you know, what are you fueling for? If you're Mm -hmm. fueling for just health in in general, which you should be at the majority of the time, you want 90 percent of your foods to be good quality foods at the right time of day. And then about 10%, you can enjoy it. So pick a day of the week where a lot of people call it their cheat day in our industry. I don't think you can cheat on your own buns, right? (laughs) So I call it rewards day because you've worked hard at keeping that health all week. So maybe pick a day out of that week where you can have, you know, one of my loves too is, because I love food, one of my loves too is to have like pancakes, real pancakes with real maple syrup, put the whipped cream on and the berries and the whole nine yards, you know. I know, right? <laughs> I love so much good food, but but um, that's what got me into my baking more. <laughs> but also, when I when I look at it, I can have these foods and I can enjoy these these um, comfort foods, as we want to call them, at, at the right time. You know, not when I'm twelve weeks out from a show and I'm trying to get ready to step on stage. That's not the time to enjoy them. You know, the time to enjoy them is the the whole rest of the year fuel that body properly so that you're healthy and you're fit and you're you're not depriving the body a lot of the times people think of diet as a deprivation diet should mean dietary intake what's your eating time of day and then go from there wonderful well said and thank you christine and people want more information where can they go um, well, I am online on Your Body Tech, and it's spelled U-R-B-O-D-Y-T-E-C-H. Um, it's also on my website. You can contact me in any way. Um, and, you know, don't be shy. Go on my, uh, I'm under Christine Rutherford on my social media as well. So you can find me under Chris Fitbiz or Chris Dean, uh, Christine Rutherford um, under my social media. And don't be shy to reach out to me and ask me questions. You know, if you're looking for a a put together program, I can definitely assist you with that. If you want any more, you know, information over and above that, if you're needing, or I can direct you as well, because there's a lot of people that are out there that I've teamed up with that they, you know, including Dr. Lucas McMillan, hopefully we can get on with him in the new year. And then, There's also my um, healthy uh, baking, which is uh, raw sugars, no sugars, or, you know, specific items that some of them are gluten-free and whatnot. I'm just waiting for my baking location to open the kitchen again in the next couple of weeks at a, a bigger new location. So hopefully, but that's under my tasty uh, kitchen. So, I love it. I love it. 
Well, thank you, Christine, for coming on the show, and we'll have you come back. And it was thank a pleasure. You.